Ta-da! And welcome to Joseph's Model Railway and Toy Room. Well, it's a corker of an episode today, and we're going in reverse. I'm starting with the finished product. It's a pretty fantastic thing seeing this cork laid down, just awaiting to slap some track down and really get stuck into it. All the angles have been worked out. We've got all that right now. So join me today, because as you'll see, it's no simple matter. Right, so we need to get some cork cut to lay our road bed for the track to sit upon. Now, um, again, I'm using Hornby track. Um, Pico, uh, if you're doing the HO scale, uh, Code 100 again, which is the other track I'm using. Look, the size wise, the magic number you're all chasing here is uh, 3.6 centimeters is the width you want to be cutting for a single standard single piece of track. So whether you're using your tape measure or just using some uh, ruler, you're going to come along, you're going to make, mark your notches at 3.6 from the edge, uh, make a mark, make a mark, make a mark at the end, uh, then to rule it out, a piece of timber or something like that. Yes, you could take a, a ruler and do it into, into lengths. Um, but if you if you've ordered yourself a piece of um, uh, Pico track, why not just use the box? That's what I've been using. Just slap it down, and while it's not at the entire one meter length of my uh, cork, a quick line here, and we finish it up there. It's beautiful. Now you can see I've already marked the key notches out to carry on with this uh, sheet of cork. Now here's a top little tip. As you know, most of the track I'm gonna be doing will be following a double line and up and a down line accordingly. Um, so I may not need a lot of the single track. So before I go off and cut unnecessarily what I need, and I've done this at the other end, we're just going to line our cork sheets up and just stagger them, step them back, just staggered like this. There's just three here. And just what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna run a little ruler across uh, across where that particular line is. And we're just gonna mark them. That way, if we do need to cut single track, we've got the measurements at either end, we can just rule it off and carry on. Uh, and then vice versa, if um, if we need to do double track or something else, well, that's fine, we'll just carry on. The, the little marks aren't really that important. Then, therefore, if we do need a bit of single track, we take our big long one meter ruler or we put a notch in the middle and zip, 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 zip. We've got all these perfect lines. We know exactly what we need for single track. So just coming back onto uh, cutting this cork out for the tracks. Um, obviously, I went along, used a sharp knife, went along, put my aluminium down. Um, I don't recommend it. Look, you are gonna get a far better cut just using a good quality pair of scissors. Um, so as you can see with the knife, I started getting a bit ragged there and I started losing track on where I was. You can see once again, cleaned it up a bit better, but you can still see I'm missing it. It's getting a bit ordinary here, but that's obviously where the overcut was. Here's one done with a pair of scissors. Hard to beat. Doesn't really take any longer doing it with scissors. Oh didn't trim the end off, but that's uh, that's only because we were just recycling the double sheet I thought I was gonna do with that track. So 3.6 centimeters, it's working well. If you need to double it, then double it with the appropriate gap. Well, last time we got introduced to Mrs. Murphy, and this time our friend Janet has made an appearance. Yes, indeed, not happy Jan. I have had this down for about four hours. I've thought about it. I'm not happy. I'm going to take two separate strips and I'm going to do it that way. Very disappointed. It's a waste of a sheet of cork, but better we discover it now. What an absolute catastrophe to say the least. So we tried to save some time cutting double length and laying it. I still think there's some logic in that for some other applications, but it wasn't going to be here. Um, so as you can see, I've just taken the single ones and I've laid them down. And again, just checking, just plopping some track down where it fits to do some checking with the spacing. We can see we're often exceeding it anyway. Oh, sorry, that one's uh, not a very good indication, is it? We should have him roughly in the middle, roughly in the middle. And again, we still 
are running, so we're not going to be bumping into anything. It's a fair gap in between. Um, I think it's come up a whole lot better. There's no doubt about that. So we'll just keep going at the moment with laying it down. Obviously, I don't have enough pins to keep going to hold it down on the curve, so we'll do it in some sections. Most importantly, though, I need just some weights to fit into the tight areas, and in which case, I'm just using buying a packet of these angle brackets, which are the ones I need to actually attach that track going down to the fiddle yard. Okay, so that's now been a day that's gone by, so we can quickly grab the weights that we had down here. Looks like the glue's set nicely uh, on that cork at the moment. Anything that didn't, we can always patch up later. And again, I guess the important thing is the ballast is what's going to uh, come along and seat everything down nicely. Well, let's carry on with laying some cork at the moment. And I just want to quickly point this out as we're uh, carrying on here, obviously the, the tighter one here, as we're doing it, it is tricky because as you can see, as you're bending it around, it does want to sort of pop up. So we have to just gently massage it around and that's why we, we pin it down to hold it. And the reason I'm saying it is obviously the more and more we're coming out and the less and less uh, stress we're putting onto the cork. Uh, for example, when I was doing this, it was a matter of just laying the glue down and just sitting it down. By the time the glue started to become a bit tacky, uh, it was just sitting nicely. I didn't even really have to worry about weighting it down other than at the end and, and at the point where I'd started. So um, the reason why I'm pointing that out is, as you recall in my previous uh, layout, I just used the Hornby track mat. And I didn't even worry about lifting the track up. I literally just followed the track mat and I put the track straight down onto the uh, layout. What's interesting about that is obviously that particular layout features a first radius turn. Now, doing cork on that must be a whole bunch of fun for those who have done it. Um, so I salute you and take my hat off for that. Let's get started now with getting some cork put down. It doesn't really matter which way we go, whether we're doing the inside or the outside first, but I do know that the inside is always a little more on the trickier side. So this is the way we're gonna get this down. So what we're gonna need is some glue. So just pretty much following a pretty atypical route around here as we slap it down, mostly to the end at the moment. We'll come back on a second trip here. That outside and inside is pretty important and then obviously a slap a bit more up in the middle. And I don't mind being a little bit generous as necessary. But the concept about why we're being doing these two bits is obviously because it wants to keep lifting on the end. So we want to make sure we've got enough there. And of course, in the middle, as I said, it comes up. So when we pin it down, we want something to make sure it's going to stay down. So as a result, let's get started. Always like to just, just push a bit. And so I'm going to make a little contact here. I'm just going to come up, create a little bit of a, a join there. We'll wipe that done once we've got it into the right spot. And now we'll just start uh, the process. We can certainly fast forward the footage as required here. But you'll just notice I'm pushing the track in on this direction and then I sort of work it my way in. The reason I'm doing is as I'm pushing this way, it's spreading that glue around, meaning the little ends will stay firmly down. I'm not gonna have any bits that, that sort of start to flick up. So that's why I'm doing that here, there. All right, let's get that uh, film sped up there and I'll get going. You'll notice just here for a minute, I sort of smooth the track out as I go along. The reason I'm doing that, as that glue is taking hold, you can see as I pull it, it's gently just sort of stretching. Now, I also then come back and I just sort of correct it. I don't want it to spread too much that I've got these massive gaps. But the reason why we're doing it is it also just ensures that we're not getting any bubbles popping up. And as this PVA glue starts to become a little more um, tacky as we're going down, it becomes a little more manageable to move. In fact, even within that first half an hour to an hour as you're doing this, if you need to quickly reposition something, uh, it's a wonderful thing to do. Of course, a downtime is it does take time to set, you know, we sort of leave it overnight in general. Uh, I can't, I know the exact curing time is usually 24, 48 hours or what have you. For anyone that's done this before, we sort of try and get all of our uh, stuff set uh, that evening and then the next morning we should be good to carry on 
Um, as you can see, it's sitting quite nicely as we sort of, this, this radius starts to open up a little bit here. Remember, as it's following here, so I'm finding I don't have to pin as much. We'll be able to weight it down nicely. So, now that we've got all this laid down, we may as well conclude the video. What will happen in the next half an hour is I'm just going to wander back just to make sure nothing's opening up that needs adjusting. I've just noticed a bit here that's starting to lift. I'll just get a bit of glue and pin that down to hold it down. Everything's looking reasonably good in the moment. Again, in the past, I've obviously used track pins where we nail them in. Um, on the occasion of the track this time, we're actually going to glue the track down. And of course, we need to weight things down. And in which case, in the past, I've always found very useful, whether it be baked bean tins, whether you've got books around. But in my case, I always used soda cans. And because we obviously had vending machines, the soda cans were in abundance and plenty of weight and away you go. It's really finding anything that's got a bit of weight you can use that's lying around. As you saw, as I know I've got weight in uh, this particular level. I've got it in my drill. They were just bits I had around. As we carry on with the more continuous bits, um, you'll probably find me using cans are usually one of the best things because you can put them on the side, sit them on the rail, a nice even distribution of weight. So I'll just carry on and get those... Uh, brackets in just to complete the um, ramp that's traveling down to the fiddle yard. Just make sure we're all in specification. I still think I'm gonna to need to cut that first section of board just to make sure I'm clearing the heights exactly. But uh, also I'm gonna to need to uh, get my timbers ready to create that, um, what's going to have to stage around the back to keep it lifted up. I'm still not quite sure what I'm gonna do. I've got plenty of timber. I, I want to recycle what I've got rather than buying uh, new materials. So we'll get all that to join up accordingly. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Stay safe. Toodles.